Welcome to Moving Our World. I'm the back of a ute filming a two stroke car. Please watch because I almost died making this episode. Normally, this is the part where I start rambling about the make, model, and all those awesome features, which I will. But firstly, I did want to mention how oblivious I was to the fact that DKW made cars. I was born in the early 90s, and having spent a majority of my life in New Zealand, the only DKWs that I ever saw, or recall seeing, were small scooters, mopeds, or motorcycles. Learning about the existence of the DKW F1 has taught me a lot of things, among them the history of the auto union, which then became Audi. With around 4,000 made in a period of two years, the model cemented DKW's role as a stalwart of the region's car industry. The F1 was superseded by the DKW F2, all the way up to the F8, which I have previously mentioned in my episode about the AWZ Zcal P70. It's a great video, go and check it out. Let's take ourselves back to 1931. That summer, the German Mark had collapsed, and the desperation to get a car into the DKW fleet was paramount. The designers were given only six weeks to complete this entire development. In that time, they designed the world's first mass-produced transverse front-wheel drive vehicle, a format that followed the internal combustion engine right to this day. The first cars were created in November 1930, with a successful launch the following year. And DKW actually advertised two engine choices, both a 494cc two-stroke, which the first prototype was made with, and then a 584cc two-stroke. However, according to records, none with the smaller engine actually made it into production, and all F1s had the bigger option, which was often referred to as a 600cc engine. After the first year of production, DKW was a part of the famous auto union merger, combining Audi, Horch, DKW and Wanderer. The DKW F1 only hung around till 1932 when it was replaced by the F2, which was a physically bigger offering, but much the same underneath. Anyway, back to the car itself, let's check this thing out. Remember, this is a wooden body, transverse, front wheel drive two stroke from 1931. Firstly, let's check out the dash. This isn't entirely original. It's got an amp meter, a wonderful benzene gauge, which I absolutely adore, and the original ignition is no longer in use. It's meant to be right there in the middle, but it's been replaced with a different one under the dash itself. According to the internet, the dash is either meant to look like this, this, or this. There is a small electric windscreen wiper for the driver. However, I don't think it would actually achieve a great amount. Regardless, this car already has more technology than I anticipated. The single door is on the right hand side of your car, that's right, it only has one, and the latch mechanism is the same in your average Kiwi garden gate. The engine is a 584cc liquid cooled two stroke with three gears and around 15 horsepower. My favourite features at this end of the car are the finned exhaust shield, the pre-auto union DKW logo, because it eventually turned into this, and then the honeycomb pattern on the radiator. And then there's the hood, which opens on each side with two rudimentary but adequate fastening mechanisms. I mean, even the wheel arches are held on with a simple flat bar support. It came with a spare wheel on the rear of the car, and these wheels wear a 3.25 by 19 inch Dunlop tire. Considerably large in diameter, yet equally very narrow. There is some storage behind the seat, Enough for a couple of period correct travel bags. And finally, we come to the roof. This thing is the Roadster version, so it is a convertible. And the roof obviously doesn't erect itself, but it's very lightweight and it was easy to lift into position. It has a small lip that sits over the top of the windscreen frame, using a pin on each corner to hold it in place. Whilst it may have provided respite from bad weather, the roof ended up being quite low. And at just under 6 foot, my head could easily touch the top. There was also the added issue of there being no physical windows on the side of the car. So even if the roof was up and it rained, you're definitely getting a bit wet. Now, for the showpiece. This vehicle is the world's first mass-produced transverse engine front-wheel drive car. What does transverse mean? It means the engine is around this way. Shown here, you can see the suspension doing its job. 
There's two leaves on either side and the drive shaft is right there in the middle. It's incredible to think this drive layout is still the same in many modern cars of 2022. Did DKW think this engine and drive layout would last for over 90 years? Probably not, but it did, and it definitely adds to the charm of this incredible old jalopy. And there we have it, a vehicle designed in only six weeks. It was a world first with a transverse front wheel drive setup, and a model that inspired a motorcycle company to continue down the path of four-wheel development. For more info on what became of the DKW F series, watch my AWZ Zwickau video. This model was the direct descendant of the post-war IFA F8, which was actually made as a direct copy of the DKW F8. Oh damn. I thought I was finished the video, but here goes one more deep dive. By the late 1940s, East Germany was created from the former Soviet sector of Germany, and the former Horst factory, which was located in Zwickau, was now producing vehicles under the name of IFA. All models were pre-war DKW designs, including the beautiful IFA F9, which was a pre-war three-cylinder two-stroke DKW design that never ended up in production thanks to the war. By the time IFA were producing it, they had updated the body to something a bit more beautiful, and the three-cylinder two-stroke sounded like this. <laughs> Okay, back on track. Around 26,000 IFA F8s were produced, and this model was the base for the AWZ Zwickau P70. Of course, this continued the wooden frame, however, it was the first vehicle to incorporate a new style of body made by Duraplast. And this single model would be superseded by a more modern steel framed Duraplast car that we all know and love as the Trabant. Specifically, this was the Trabant P50. So yes, the DKW F1, this car here, is the Trabant's great 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 grandparent, and then some. Don't forget your roots. Here's to the oldest car so far on moving our world. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Moving Our World. I love filming two strokes and hopefully I get to film more soon. Don't forget to watch my other videos. Click on my logo below the video, Moving Our World. Head into my YouTube account, click on videos and have a look at the other stuff that I have posted. If two wheels are your thing more than four, go and check out my other channel, Small Bike Stuff. Otherwise, if you have enjoyed this, please throw me a comment or a like or a subscribe or whatever you feel like doing. I love to hear other people's stories about these vehicles. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.